ចាស់សួស្ដីវាចូលម្ដងសេសសិនទីso the process by which they can produce enzyme is called the central dogma which involves from production of RNA from DNA and production of protein from the transcribed RNA. So the important step, the important first step is converting the messages inside the DNA into a genetic blueprint which is RNA and this step is known as transcription. Now transcription in prokaryotes could be uh, seen in three different phases and the first phase is initiation, second phase is elongation and the third phase is termination. So we would go about one by one and look at the details the, what are the events in each of these phases let's begin with initiation so in initiation the key players are definitely the dna that need to be transcribed the rna polymerase and the sigma factor so the rna polymerase and the sigma factor forms the rna polymerase hollow enzyme and definitely the nucleotide triphosphate which would be used to synthesize nascent mRNA. So just before the transcription start site the nomenclature is used as minus uh, to denote the upstream region and the plus to denote the downstream region. At 10 base pair upstream and 35 base pair upstream there are some well conserved consensus sequence to which the prokaryotic polymerase can bind and this binding and finding this promoter is aided by the sigma factor so the sigma factor really helps in binding of these um RNA polymerase to the desired promoter region. Now, the sequences in this minus 10 base pair and minus 35 base pair are well conserved. And these are known as consensus sequences. Now, after that, it has been seen that without the sigma factor, the polymerase can hardly detect the promoter and even if it detect the promoter and start to transcribe the gene it would be aborted after transcribing few nucleotides of the mrna so without the pro without the sigma factor the fidelity of the transcription fa transcription is hampered and at the same time promoter recognition is harder the most common sigma factor in the bacteria is known as sigma 70 so with the sigma factor attached the rna polymerase can properly understand what, which site to be recognized as a promoter and it can form the rna now the most common sigma factor is sigma 70 which bind to minus 35 base pair ttgaca region and minus 10 tatat region other sigma factors in E. coli involve sigma 32 or sigma 28 for heat shock genes etc. Now the second step is elongation. Now for elongation step for the simplicity purpose this RNA polymerase would be denoted as a bubble. Now RNA polymerase is a big enzyme have, having beta dash 
beta, alpha, alpha 2, omega and sigma subunit. Sigma subunit is part of the hollow enzyme complex. The active zone is comprising beta and beta dash sub subunits. So in case of elongation, this RNA polymerase introduces positive supercoiling at the front of it and leaves the negative supercoiled DNA at the back. And inside that, inside this enzyme, NTPs enter that would help to form the newly synthesized RNA in a template dependent manner. The strand which is used as a template is known as template strand. The opposite strand is known as coding strand. Now the newly synthesized RNA has a sequence totally similar to their coding strand. Just a difference is the RNA has uracil whereas the coding strand has thymine. So the sequence in the coding strand is just similar to the mRNA sequence and the RNA sequence is complementary to the template strand. Now the RNA polymerase move in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction and synthesizing the mRNA. And RNA polymerase, the fidelity and the processivity in the RNA polymerase is lesser than a DNA polymerase because you can clearly imagine if the DNA polymerase makes an error then th that error could be detrimental because replication only happens once but for a transcription a gene could be transcribed by a RNA polymerase several times so one transcript if it is faulty it might give rise to a faulty protein but that might not be so important in the long run so that's why that's why the fidelity of the transcription process or the accuracy of the transcription process is way lower than the replication and the rate of transcription is roughly 40 nucleotide per second. Now if we zoom into the structural details of the RNA polymerase in bacteria and all about these structural details are well known due to the extra crystallographic structure we would clearly see in the beta and beta dash subunit there is the entry site of the untranscribed DNA that enters and the helicase activity creates the strand uh, separates the strand and in a magnesium dependent manner the polymerization happens now for polymerization to occur the specific catalysis is known as metal ion catalysis here the magnesium forms magnesium is actually used to stabilize the triphosphate that is getting ent entered as NTPs from the NTP entry site. Now the template, the, the newly synthesized strand which is complementary to the template strand attacks the phosphate linkage using a nucleophilic attack and as a result the new template strand is the, the complementary strand to the template strand that means the newly synthesized mRNA is elongated. Now, definitely, there are some antibody, there are some uh, antibiotics such as rifampicin, which blocks this process by binding to a, a site adjacent to the active site and works like a steric factor of entry to the, of the substrate DNA inside it. So that is how the activity of these enzymes could be blocked by several antibiotics as well. Now, then we come to the overview of termination. In bacteria, the termination of the transcription depends upon a termination sequence which is present at the end of this, uh, the, the transcript. Now, there are two modes of termination. One is row dependent termination. So, row is a helicase which can literally move across the RNA and free the RNA from the hold of the RNA polymerase and the whole complex dissociates and the synthesized RNA is now free from the DNA and the second type of termination is known as row independent termination where it has a palindromic sequence which forms a hairpin loop and it prevents the RNA polymerase to move further forward and also there is a poly U site poly U stretch and in poly U stretch the adenine and uracil bonds are relatively weak so such that it could be easily broken and the mRNA could fall out of the 
DNA. There are three major types of RNA which occur in all organisms. They are messenger RNA that is mRNA, transfer RNA that is tRNA and ribosomal RNA that is rRNA. Let us know about the messenger RNA. As the name suggests, mRNA carries the genetic information from DNA to the ribosomes. Genetic informations on the DNA are transcribed into the mRNA by a process called transcription. Here the message is translated into action that is, based on the genetic information, different types of proteins are synthesized. The type of gene that is involved in protein synthesis depends upon their strength, kinds and sequence of nucleotides. It is about 3 to 5 percent of the RNA content of the cell. The mRNA is always single stranded. The mRNA is produced as a complementary copy of the DNA which is involved in protein synthesis. Let us know about transfer RNA. Transfer RNA is also known as soluble RNA, srNA. The tRNA is a small molecule compared with other types of RNAs. It amounts to about 15% of total RNA of the cell. The tRNA molecule performs a number of functions. The most important one is to act as a carrier of amino acid to the site of protein synthesis. There are about more than 20 types of tRNAs. Each tRNA is a specific for a particular amino acid. In bacterial cell, there are more than 70 tRNAs and in eukaryotic cells, the number is even greater. There are 4 or 5 tRNAs specific for a particular amino acid and these are called isoacceptor tRNAs. Describe ribosomal RNA. This is found in the ribosomes. The rRNA represents about 40 to 60 percent of the total weight of the ribosomes. Relatively, it constitutes about 80 percent of the total RNA of the cells. They are produced in the nucleus. They are the most stable forms of RNA. They consist of single strand of nucleotides. At some regions, the strand is folded. So in this video, we would look at how antibiotics can interfere with transcription, how that process could be used in molecular biology or in medicine.
So let's just first revise the concept of transcription a little bit. Then we move to the antibiotics part. So we know in case of eukaryotes, there is a basal transcription factors like TF2 families. All these TF2 families bind the promoter and help to recruit the eukaryotic RNA polymerase. One component of these initiation complex for transcription is transcription factor 2H or TF2H, which actually phosphorylate the C-terminal domain of the RNA pol 2. Now, this TF2H also has a helicase activity. It has a phosphorylase and a helicase activity. Once the C-terminal domain is phosphorylated, it gives the, trans the RNA pol as a start signal to move along the DNA and transcribing the mRNA, right? Now let's look at how several antibiotics interfere with these process of making RNA from DNA. First, we'll talk about actinomycin D. Here is the structure of actinomycin D. It's like a pretty flat ring, which can get incorporated in between the DNA base stacks and that can work like a transcription block. So here you can see how the actinomycin D ring gets fit between GC base pairs. So it's work like a road bump, a huge one. So when the RNA polymerase 2 is moving all across the DNA and trying to transcribe it, it faces this roadblock and it has to stop there. So the transcription is inhibited at, in a premature state. That is how actinomycin D works. Now, actinomycin D is very important in context of biological research. Imagine, let's say you, you have actinomycin and let's see what you can do. So let's say you found that these cells, if you give them a magic chemical which you have isolated from some source, let's say, they would really show change in their cell division kinetics and they would show increased proliferation. Now you want to understand that what are the molecular process that leads to this physical change, the proliferation phenotype. So you would think about, okay, transcription could be a reason, trans, uh, their translation could be a reason, post-translational modification could play a role in this. But let's say you have a specific question that transcription is important for that. In order to understand that, what you can do is add actinomycin D to block the transcription. And then see, when you block the transcription, you have an effect or not. So if transcription has a role, if it is yes, let's talk about rifampicin. Rifampicin is very specific to the prokaryotic RNA polymerase. It is not specific for eukaryotic RNA polymerase. It is, eukaryotic RNA polymerase is not sensitive to rifampicin. Rifampicin can bind to the beta dash subunit of the prokaryotic RNA polymerase. and it holds the RNA polymerase there and reduce its promoter clearance probability. Once the promoter is not cleared, abortive transcription can happen and short length uh, mRNAs would be generated, which would not give rise to a functional protein. And that's how the bacteria would be dead. So that is how rifampicin interacts with, uh, interferes with the transcription process by directly binding with the beta subunit of prokaryotic RNA polymerase. Now, rifampicin do not affect the eukaryotic RNA polymerase. It, it turns out the eukaryotic RNA polymerase has different, very low binding affinity with rifampicin and that's why it is resistant. Now, rifampicin, as it can really interfere selectively the RNA polymerase of bacteria, it is used as an antibacterial agent, especially for tuberculosis. Rifampicin is used as a drug in combination with many other antibiotics. Okay,